Good morning, everybody. This is Maven of Mystery, and I have been looking back on some things, and this is my vlog um, regarding my experiences with the International Churches of Christ. Just recently, I've been looking at <clears throat> some things on YouTube that discuss the church, and... Um, it's being a cult and it's a Christian cult. So it's kind of deceptive. You really don't know what you're getting into until you're there and, and hooked in. And it's, it has destroyed my faith. I had been a person that really wanted to be a person of God and, um, I loved God, but I didn't understand the Bible. I tried reading it from beginning to end, and it just confused me. So I felt like I needed somebody to help me get through it, to help me study it and to understand it. Um, somebody that was more knowledgeable than I was. And um, there was a time I was in the Episcopal Church, and... Um, my pastor there was a really, really good guy and we would have counseling sessions and I would have all kinds of questions and his answers to me, um, just seemed like God was this easygoing kind of person and he, he sent Jesus down to atone for our sins and one of the questions I asked him was, is Judas in hell? And he said, no. He said that, um, that Jesus sacrificed his life for all. And if he lost one soul, it would be for nothing if he lost anybody. So I thought, well, everybody's going to heaven. You know, even the person who killed somebody or... Um, you know, sexually molested somebody, they're all going to be in heaven too? I just, I couldn't wrap my mind around that. So I needed, I needed to have justice, I think, instead of mercy in my, in my life. Because of the things that had happened to me, I wanted justice. I didn't want mercy. Not for those people. So... I needed to find, you know, some help. And I didn't feel like I was getting it there. So I decided, um, because of a, a whole different other things that were going on in my life, that I was going to move. And I had some friends who were Christians in Texas who invited us, my, my son and I, to move there. I was um, a kind of um, over-the-phone co-worker of this lady, and we both worked um, for American Airlines in the small package um, air cargo um, industry. So I went down there, and I don't think that I was what they had expected. I was... Um, well, as I am right now, I was very overweight and I had my son and I don't, I think they didn't really think it through having us come there. So, I mean, she was showing me around and we spent time at her house, but I wasn't even there a day when she said, well, you know, I don't have space for you, but there's a hotel down the street. And so I ended up calling um, my co-worker's sister in Oakland. And I said, you know what? I don't think that God wants me to be in Texas. I think he wants me to be in California. And so they invited us to come and stay with them. And we left that day. Um, I got there. I ended up getting in on uh, assistance. We enrolled Matthew and my son in school, 
and he was eight at the time. And I basically had the couch and Matthew had a little bed in, in a room. And we were there about two months. Hmm. She and I would have Bible studies. Um, we'd watch this televangelist and, and stuff, but I still wasn't getting fed spiritually. I didn't agree with some of the things that the televangelist was saying, and um, it just didn't, um, it wasn't congruent. It wasn't, it didn't make sense. Um, I started working part-time for a real estate firm who um, hired telemarketers basically to get people to want to sell their house. Um, so we did a lot of cold calls. About the third day that I was working there, less than a week, he said to me, um, you're a Christian, aren't you? And at the time, I was the pray Jesus in your heart kind of Christian. So, of course, I said yes. And he said, well, he knew that I was, you know, new to, you know, California and stuff. And that I didn't have a lot of friends, or at least he assumed that, which was actually true. So he goes, well, you know what? There's someone you should meet. And he took my work phone and called this phone number and spoke to a woman. And in their conversation, I could tell that she was inviting him to something, but he was like, no, I don't, I don't have the time and um, everything. But there is a girl who works with me who is new to the area and needs to build relationships and she's a Christian. And her name is Linda and he handed me the phone. So I'm feeling kind of weird and I start talking to this woman and she introduces herself to me and says a little bit and then I'm saying a little bit and he's standing there and he's all happy, you know? And so I'm like, okay, but I feel weird. I'm at work, you know, and now I'm taking a break from telemarketing. So then he walks away and she's inviting me to events that I can't go to because I am working during the hours that they're having Bible talk or uh, midweek service or, you know, these kind of things. And so I have to tell her, you know, Monday through Friday, I'm working. I worked evening hours because you had to catch people when they were at home. And so... Um, she invited me to church. And so I was like, okay. But when she called me like the day before to firm up going to church, I didn't want to go. So I would make one excuse after another. And so it took about four weeks before I actually went to church. During the service, oh, the other thing is I had a car and I was fully willing to meet them at church but they never really got around to telling me where the heck it was. And after I have the conversation with them, I think, well, where is it? <laughs> and so they had arranged to come pick me up. And so I went and I felt like the minister was speaking directly to me. And after the service, um, well, yeah, after the sermon, he had invited those that were, in, you know, new, that were not members, to ask the person that they came with to study the Bible. So that was enormously what I wanted to hear. And so after service, I asked her, to study the Bible with me. And she was like, um, you know what? There's someone you should meet. And she introduced me to a, a nice lady who, and she, you know, Linda wants to study the Bible. And she was pretty excited about that. But we didn't really talk about 
you know, studying the Bible. We talked about other things. So another lady came up and she got right to the point. Do you want to study the Bible? You want to get together and study? And I was like, yes, I was so eager. I wanted so much to know more. So we set up for that afternoon and I went with them to study. And the, um, the Seeking God study, they had Seeking God, and I cannot remember right now off the top of my head what the next one was, but there was a, um, like an outline of studies that they would do with you, and each one built upon the last. And so I was in, I, I just felt like I was getting so much out of these studies and um, I stayed with them almost, you know, all night. They they took me home, it was, it was dark, so I was there from morning till evening and I was pretty fired up about what I was learning. And um, my roommates didn't really understand what was going on, but I told them, you know, how great the service was and all the things that had happened and that we had set up a study for the following day. So this happened, you know, all through the week. I was gone, well, you know, Matthew went to school and I wasn't home when he came home from school. I was off studying the Bible. And I didn't come home sometimes till four o'clock in the morning, three, four o'clock in the morning. And this was so intense. And it lasted a week. The following Sunday, I was baptized. And at that point, they wanted me to move out. There was no real place for us to go at that point at that particular time. And they had even suggested that I move out to a shelter, which I wasn't ready to do that. Um, uh, my, my friend in Oakland was devastated. She didn't understand what was going on with me. Um, she had overheard me, you know, confessing my sins and, and she was like, God doesn't want you to do this. And I just couldn't get it. I mean, I, I thought she couldn't get it. But she was like, you know, God understands the way the world is and, you know, where you're at. And it's kind of like, you know, she saw all these works that I was doing. And, and the Bible talks about, you know, saved by grace. And I just... You know, I thought that she was clueless and not saved. And um, I, got, I got hooked right away. And my son was so confused. He did not know what was going on. And so we ended up leaving that home and getting a motel room. And I stayed in the motel room until my money ran out. And then we ended up in the Salvation Army shelter. And we were there for, I don't know, maybe a week. Um, it was really disturbing, but everybody was lifting me up for, you know, my dedication, my heart for God, you know, and, and all this kind of thing. So you're, you're getting um, this message that, you know, that you were doing so well when I was in the shelter <laughs> with my son and it was dangerous. It, it, it was not a good environment, but, um, you know, eventually we got to stay with a, a married couple and we were there for about four months. It was, it was really hard. Um, things happened to me. I, I sprained my ankle and, and people were, um, you know, I, I basically, 
at one point left that home, went to went back to the motel and kind of hid for a while because I just I was so conflicted. It it wasn't um I couldn't get with the program. Um, I just, it just didn't seem, there, things just didn't seem right to me. And when I would try to resolve them, it came back on me that, you know, I was lacking in faith, that I wasn't relying on God, and that I was giving in to Satan. And, and it was just painful, painful. And, um, but I ended up humbling myself, going back to that married couple, staying for um, a little while longer, ended up going with another married couple for a month before I had um, the money from my, my re tax refund to be able to move into an apartment, which I did with another single mom who had a son. Anyway, I'm going to stop here and um, pick it up a little while later because it kind of hurts my heart talking about these things. Um, thanks for listening. Bye.